Shanahan's offense takes a year to learn. We've heard this for a while, right? Well, it takes a year to learn. It takes a year to learn. It takes a year to learn. So I was like, all right, let's play this game. Let's go back. Let's look at it. Now, some quarterbacks I just kind of took out um, because they weren't, quote, unquote, the guy or whatever else. So I didn't do RG3 with the injury. I didn't do Kirk Cousins because that was weird, and you know he wasn't really in there. So I looked at basically five quarterbacks, okay, or four quarterbacks, sorry. Jimmy Garoppolo, Matt Schaub, Matt Ryan, and Brock Purdy. Because you you had a stepped in, all that stuff. Now, again, Brock Purdy's information, we only have the first year, so th that part's going to be conjecture. So we're going to save that till the end. Let's talk about Jimmy G first. Man, I didn't know we were going to talk about Jimmy G so much. But this is all in an effort to analyze and critique this idea that it takes Shanahan system one full year, okay? Jimmy Garoppolo gets traded midseason, and the whole plan was to just sit him. No playoff contention. We didn't care. They were just going to sit him. They, they didn't want to throw him out there to see what was going on. But then injuries happen. Injuries happen. Jimmy Garoppolo steps in for those last five games. Y'all remember that back in 2017. Um, and you could argue the five best games of his entire career. Now, not statistically, but it was just, it was by far his worst supporting cast. And he just dominated. I mean, I mean he was unbelievable. Now he goes five and zero down the stretch against three playoff teams. Destroyed the Jaguars like they were the best defense in the NFL by far. That led to Jalen Ramsey being traded. It just their entire organization plummeted after that game. But he only threw seven touchdowns versus five interceptions and a sixty-seven percent completion percentage during that five-game span. Small sample size. We're going to get another small sample size here in a little bit, but that's okay. So. Comes back the next year, and this would have been the year to break down the first year's a learning year in the Shanahan offense, but he tears his ACL three weeks into 2018. We all know how that goes against the Chiefs. Why are you trying to stay in bounds, Jimmy? Just go out of bounds, live to play another day, whatever. Then he comes back after the injury, and the only season in the past 10 years for the 49ers of one quarterback staying healthy. Of course, how's that go? We make it all the way to the Super Bowl. Jimmy Garoppolo uh, goes 13 and three. Well, the 49ers go 13 and three, but they were leading them. And I understand somebody listening or watching this is sitting there screaming, wins are not a quarterback stat. And you're not wrong, but I do think that it factors in. Um, there's more than just the quarterback, but at the end of the day, wins are what it's about. So in 2019, you go, you go 13 and three, make it all the way to the Super Bowl, number one seed. You know, he had a 69% completion percentage, 27 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. That's elite for Jimmy G. You know, just barely above that two to one ratio. That's as good as Jimmy's ever going to be. That, that's just what it is. So if, if you just look at, you know, th this is a rough one because you got the injured year in there. So you could say, man, he was in it for two years if you want to be accurate. Now, Matt Schaub and Matt Ryan, the Matt brothers, these are as clear as it gets. Now, we're going back, 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 back in time. This is all the way back with the Houston Texans. We're going 2008, 2009. Matt Schaub, his first year with Shanahan in Houston was not good. Um, he, 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, not great. Six and five as a win-loss record, not great. Second year, again, this is Matt freaking Schaub in the Texans. He led the league in completions, attempts, yards, yards per game was unbelievable. They go 9-7, and seven, which is great for Houston. And he threw 29 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. By far Matt Schaub's best career of his, of his entire thing. So this is where the narrative started to build was, hey, man, guess what? It's going to take a year to get into this. Look what he did with Matt Schaub. Look what he did with Matt Schaub. Now let's go Matt Ryan. When Shanahan came in in 2015, they were average. They go 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, Matt Ryan goes 21 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. Not great. 66 completion percentage. All right. That's pretty good. But then the second year, this is when things went crazy. Because Matt Ryan goes out there and wins the MVP, led the NFL in pass, uh, Yards per attempt, yards per catch, quarterback rating, passer rating, you name it, Matt Ryan was everywhere. They go 11-5, and five, 38 touchdowns to 7 interceptions. Oh, Matt squared. Thank you, Sin. I like that one. 
Hey, two mats and a G. <laughs> you guys are the best, man. I, I love this. Um, but, you know, Matt Ryan, he goes out 38 touchdowns to seven interceptions, 70% completion percentage. Just unbelievable. And as soon as Shedahead left, guess what happened to Matt? Mm-hmm. Matt Ryan's just stats went back, regressed to the me. There's something for if you could get a quarterback that doesn't put the ball in jeopardy. And again, you look at Matt Ryan, Matt Schaub, or even Jimmy G for that matter. None of them have elite traits. None of them. There's no elite traits present. Uh, Physical traits, right? None of them have the strongest arm. None of them are the biggest quarterbacks. None of them have, you know, fast 40-yard time, 10-yard time. Like, no, that's not who they are. They're all timing, anticipation quarterbacks with quick releases. That's kind of what he was used to. And this is why... When the trade happened, you know, jumping up to three, so many outsiders were saying, oh, it's it's Matt jo- it's Mac Jones because he fits Jimmy G, Matt Schaub, Matt Ryan. But I kept screaming, no, you don't trade up for the same thing that you already have. You already have Jimmy G. You got to go, you know, try to go for more, whatever else. They take Trey Lance, whatever. Let's jump now to Brock Purdy's first year. We don't have a second year yet, obviously. Um, but... I think that we can kind of connect dots on the trajectory that Brock Purdy, where he belongs in the midst of these guys we've been talking about. Now, he only had seven starts. I'm not counting the start against Miami, and I don't want to count the start against um, Philly. I, like, you have to either include both those or remove both those, right? And, and However you want to do that, that's okay. That's just the way I did, arbitrarily, whatever. So he goes 7 and 0 in those games, 16 to 4 touchdown to interception ratio. That's crazy. Like again, let me let me pull this up because I think this is just hilarious. Kenny Pickett, all right, who we're going to get to see week 1 was kind of, you know, one of the leaders for rookie of the year so was Brock Purdy. Kenny Pickett started he played in 13 games, started 12. Kenny Pickett threw seven touchdowns <laughs> and nine interceptions. Like, this is crazy to me. You look at Brock Purdy, he goes 16 and four. Now, there's a big difference. You have one of the most innovative offensive play callers in the NFL, and Kyle Shanahan. His system has everybody wants a piece of it. Then you have Matt Canada, who's literally watching paint dry, boring, the worst play caller, I think. Him, him or the Dallas Cowboys head coach. Uh, those are the two that I would be like, no, 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 no. Uh, but whatever. He goes 16 and four touchdown interception. Um, and you know, 65% completion percentage, which is all right, not great, and 108 passer rating. Now, what can we anticipate for Brock next year? And I don't want to turn this into the Brock or Trey or Sam. I don't give a damn about that. I just want to play with this whole narrative. Okay, Shanahan takes a year. Can we expect Brock Purdy? play to increase like we saw with Jimmy G, with Matt Schaub, with Matt Ryan? I don't think so. If if he, (laughs) if we just double his numbers and he throws 32 touchdowns and eight interceptions, one, he would be the first 49ers quarterback to throw for over 30 touchdowns since, guess who? Jeff Garcia. It's been a long time. He would be MVP with those numbers. Like, if we look at what... And again, like, I, I get it whenever we talk Patrick Mahomes. Like, that dude's a unicorn. Like, he's an all-time unicorn. Um, but he threw 41 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. You know, 32 and 8 interceptions is right on par with that. Like, that would be crazy. Now, Mahomes threw for over 5,000 yards and whatever else. But you look back at Matt Ryan's, you know, year that he won the MVP. He threw 38 and 7. Like, it would be on par with that. And again, you have to remember, the 49ers are a much more run-heavy team. When they had Julio Jones and Roddy White and all that stuff, they were throwing the ball a decent amount. Now, obviously, they had Freeman, and they had Tevin Coleman, and they did run the ball, but this team is much more predicated upon the run now. But good gosh, if you could just double those stats, like, so whatever I'm talking about, Brock Purdy, he doesn't have to improve. If you could just get that level of play, 
That's all you need. What's up, Judd? Uh, good man right here. He says, Purdy is limited, but that's okay if he's limited to be an elite. Limited, uh, yeah, there we go. I think that's awesome. Um, and you can talk about the limited arm strength. He's not throwing 60-yard lasers. That's not it. But he's ev elite everywhere else. And that's the thing. Like, I don't need, and I don't think the 49ers need Brock to double his play or elevate his play. You just need Brock to do what he did. Now, the critics would say this. Well, now, defensive coordinators have tape on Brock. They know his tendencies. They know his hot reads. They know whatever he panics, what he does. He rolls to the left. Um, and so you always kind of see this sophomore slump. Nobody knew who Brock Purdy was. Nobody scouted him. Nobody wanted to draft him. So it was just like, well, who is this guy? Whatever. He's nobody. Well, then he come out and shocked everybody. He's not going to shock anybody anymore. Whenever Brock Purdy does step up and play, and I do think that Brock Purdy will be the quarterback at some point this year, I don't I don't see either quarterback, whether it's Trey Lance, Brock Purdy, Sam, I don't care. There's going to be quarterbacks coming in and out of this system just because it's the 49ers. It's the way that it happens. But when Brock Purdy comes out, there will be a fully detailed scouting report through and through on what he can and can't do and where to attack him and where not to. You know, I, I didn't include Miami and in all these stats and whatever, but when he came in for that Miami game, the Dolphins said, zero blitz, nonstop, go get this rookie who's never played before. And what did Brock do? He freaking lit their ass on fire. Made them look like idiots. And they just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. He's like, bring it, baby. Did the whole ice in the veins. He didn't give a damn. Most fun game of the past year. Oh, my gosh. That game was so fire. Sucked that Jimmy G got hurt, though. Um, so, you know, again, the biggest issue is just this regression that I think could be expected, but man, a four to one touchdown to interception ratio that he had in his first, that does not happen. Okay. That does not happen. That is like top five all time. If he finished his career with a four to one touchdown to interception ratio, it'd be one of the top five all times, like not even close. So, you're going to regress some. I don't need it to double. That would be almost insane. Um, but, yeah, yeah, we'll kind of have to see how that plays out. But I thought this was a fun question. Thank you, Niall, uh, for the support on Patreon, first off. But also, just, man, that was a fun little deep dive. You know, dive it in. It, there's a constant, you got to look back um, a lot. Because, you know, we have Shady Head since 2017, but you got to remember, like, the sample size is much bigger because he's been calling plays for so long. He's been in OC. He's been around all these guys for so long that you can kind of judge things. Now, Shanahan's evolved considerably, and I would also argue that this is by far the best supporting cast that Shanahan has ever had, even over those, uh, what was it, 2015? Yeah, 2015 um, Falcons, who almost won the Super Bowl, right, with Julio and Roddy White. Like, they were good. This is a better team. This is is a better supporting cast by a considerable margin. Now, is anybody as good as Julio Jones? No, but you're talking Trent Williams. Okay, they didn't have a Trent Williams. They didn't have a George Kittle. They didn't have a Christian McCaffrey. They, like, it's just different, but this is better. The 49ers Rush Podcast.